Okay. Am I working? Okay. Okay. I guess last year they did the same panel, and um, uh, there was only four mayors, and uh, it was easy to keep track of everyone that way, and everyone got to talk a lot longer. But uh, this time we have quite a big crowd. Um, last time I was told an hour beforehand because the moderator didn't show up. Uh, this time it seems to be a bigger crowd, so now that I'm less prepared than I was last time, I guess we'll start. So I, I think what we're going to do first is, since we have such a big crowd, we're going to give everybody just one minute. Um, please state your name, your, your title, your city, and then if you want to put a little bit in about, um, about your city, um, uh, you're welcome to do that. The topic is smart cities. And of course, you're not in the same order you guys are on here. So I guess we can start at this end. We're going to start this end with Gustav. Great, thank you. Well, hello, everyone. My name is Gustav Larson. I'm the vice mayor of Sunnyvale. Um, and I actually have a background in software development, embedded software, networking, cybersecurity. So I'm in hog heaven here today. This is right up my alley. Um, so I've seen both sides of it. I, I've seen it from the engineering development side, and now I'm seeing it from the government side and the challenges of uh, bringing smart technology to the cities. I see a lot of opportunity, but um, you know, quite frankly, government sometimes has a lot of uh, um, a, a lot more hoops to jump through, and so it's not as easy as you might think. I think I'll leave it there, and we can talk about that a lot more during the panel. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good morning, or what's left of the morning. Uh, my name is Johnny Camus. I'm a council member with the City of San Jose. I'm also the head of the Economic Development Committee for our city, and we welcome all of you, welcome all your businesses. We want all of you to know that we want your businesses to come, stay, and succeed in San Jose. Uh, our city is, is big on technology. We're a demonstration site for many, many startups. Uh, San Jose is also investing uh, a lot in its own technology uh, platforms, software platforms, and we're a great place to do business. Um, so basically, we, we want you to know that companies like Philips are testing uh, their, their smart poles here. Uh, Anycom, internet connected street lights are being tested here. Facebook is, is testing their Wi Fi network here. Um, you know, we, we even have uh, our garbage companies, our garbage businesses testing out new ways to recycle and uh, com compost and, and make new materials out of what's being generated um, at those. And yesterday we announced uh, the Autonomous Vehicle Initiative. Uh, we, we would love to have your businesses in San Jose and welcome to our city. Good morning. Um, my name is Lily May. I'm the mayor for the city of Fremont. And we're very proud in our city to be home to a lot of the technology that we're saying is changing the culture and dynamics uh, of so many areas in our nation right now. We are home to Tesla manufacturing, as well as a couple months ago, we opened up a second BART station, and it's one of the few smart BART stations in the area, and with EV charging and energy efficiencies, zero net energy. So we're looking for these types of opportunities. We also have that type of mentality, not just in our city and how we um, are allowing some of those uh, to be built into our infrastructure, but it's something that's cultural-wise into our partnerships. Um, I formerly was in technology and also um, was served on the school board, and so we realized that there is a real need for helping companies to succeed in building those resources and helping our citizens be prepared for that next generation. And so looking forward to sharing with you a little bit about some of those efforts in our city and um, looking forward to this discussion. Have a wonderful day. Good morning. My name is Stephen Chan. I'm Vice Mayor, current Vice Mayor of the City of Alhambra, which is down in Southern California. I think I'm the only one on panels from the South. Thank you so much for welcoming me to come to Northern California. And, um, well, you know, uh, Silicon Valley being the uh, high-tech uh, center of the world and uh, Southern California, I think we're the user base of this new technology. I'm here to, uh, as well as uh, all the uh, audience here, try to learn from my colleagues up here and see what they have and then bring back. Maybe one of these days, uh, some of the Southern California citizens catch up. Thank you so much. 
Hello, I'm David Albert, uh, Mayor of Dublin, California. Hello, and for my Chinese friends in the audience, ni hao. Nice to see you today. Uh, Dublin is on the outer ring of the Silicon Valley. We're a growing bedroom community where many of you and your friends and people in technology live, and then they spend two hours on the road getting down to Santa Clara and San Jose to come work. So we like to think that uh, the inventor of the next Google, or the next Facebook, or the next LinkedIn and Twitter will come from the Tri-Valley area. Uh, and we welcome technology, we welcome startups, we welcome jobs being created in the Tri-Valley. We think it's the right thing uh, to do, so we're very supportive of that. We're also a very smart city already. You may have heard we do have two BART stations as well. We've recently announced that we will be studying an autonomous bus that will take you from the BART station the last mile to where you need to go. An autonomous bus that, that will be uh, like what you saw on the, uh, the screen earlier today. Uh, we've also, very smart, we've announced Go Dublin, where we've announced the ability to eliminate unproductive bus routes, the big giant bus that has a highly paid bus driver taking two people uh, to where they need to go. Instead, we're going to use Uber and Lyft and Taxi Cab, DeSoto Cab, so that we would rather help subsidize a shared ride than have a bus take you on a fixed route in a very unproductive way. So we're very uh, progressive with that. We're one of the first in the nation to uh, do, do that, eliminate unproductive bus routes and replace with a shared, shared ride. So that's Dublin. I'm glad to be here today. Thank you. John Marchand. I'm John Marchand, Livermore uh, Mayor, and uh, we are also part of the Tri Valley, uh, which we also refer to as Photon Valley. Uh, Livermore is the uh, uh, oldest uh, commercial wine region in the state of California, and we are also uh, the home of cutting edge technology. Uh, we have one of the fastest supercomputers in the world, uh, and we also have next weekend the world's fastest rodeo. Uh, we have the most powerful laser uh, in the world. And we also have the longest continuously burning light bulb, which has been burning for 116 years continuously. Uh, we are also one of only six cities in the world that has the distinction of having an element named after it uh, and to appear on the periodic table of elements. Uh, this is exciting for me because I spent my career as a chemist uh, before I became mayor. One of the great assets that we have in Livermore is we have two national laboratories. Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory and Sandia National Laboratory. And those two laboratories develop technologies which allow smart cities uh, to use the technology that they use uh, to develop those techs. So thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Peter Otaki. I'm the vice mayor of Menlo Park. Menlo Park's about uh, 15 miles north of here. It's largely a suburban. Uh, community, but we have a little street known as uh, Sand Hill Road, and so San Jose is the capital of Silicon Valley. We are the venture capital of Silicon Valley, where most of the venture capital firms are located. We also have uh, the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center, SRI, um, but more recently we're known as the home of Facebook. Facebook was headquartered in, in Tiny Mountain Park, and so we are grappling with all of the changes of growth with trying to keep them and preserve the residential quality of life in, in our town. Um, I previously uh, was the CFO of a tech startup, so technology is near and dear to my heart, and so we certainly aspire to apply technology to improve the quality of lives of our residents. So, thank you. Hello, I'm Savita Vaidenathan, Mayor of the City of Cupertino. Uh, we are about uh, 64,000 in population and almost more than 60% is Asian. So, ni hao, namaste, hello. Uh, and uh, as a, <laughs> thank you. Uh, and if any of you have one of these in your pocket or the bigger kind, thank you so much. We are the headquarters of Apple. Uh, we proudly are going to inaugurate the spaceship landing in Cupertino very soon. Uh, but other than Apple, we are also known for our schools, and our students are, are pride. We really encourage them to do more and more. One of the things that Cupertino has been hosting for the past few years is something called the Silicon Valley Smart Cup, and that's where we encourage uh, people with new ideas, 
come and pitch and then a few of them are selected and they are matched with the coach and then they are taken to the through the entire process of developing a business. And now we are going to do the same for our high school students. We are going to have something similar for 18 and below. So we are hoping to get many more ideas from them. Recently, our students did a hackathon from which two of the applications is something the city is actually going to adopt and uh, have our residents use. One is something very similar to what we've been hearing here, carpool, because we have students going to school and commuters going to work in the morning and trying to get a kind of carpool where we get reduced traffic on the streets. And the other one is a walking bus, again, have children um, walk with other children to school in a safe way. So these are ideas that came from our kids and we are very, very proud of them. So we encourage you to come visit us in our city. We are going to have a kind of an incubator area, a geographical space that will encourage incubators uh, when Apple gives up some of the spaces that they have leased. Um, and we hope to have many of you come visit us and talk to us with your ideas. Uh, we have a, actually we have a hotel uh, in Cupertino which has a robot that will bring you your toothbrushes and things that you might not have. So we have some interesting things other than the iPhone in Cupertino. So welcome and thank you very much for inviting me. I'm honored to be here with the fellow panelists. Thank you. Well, you guys did great. You kind of almost stepped to your time, kept your time. You, you did well. So um, I'm glad there's a lot of technical people on the panel. Uh, just to let's give you a heads up, we're going to do a right shift as we talk down. That would be a left shift for you in the audience. So um, everybody, I've noticed when I ask somebody what's a smart city, everybody seems to have their own opinion. Um, and uh, it's, 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 it's interesting how those opinions vary depending on where you are. So I guess my first question is, what does a smart city mean to you? Well, a, a smart city is a city that's willing to take risks, in my opinion, some, some risks on uh, allowing technology, technologies to be piloted, uh, for example, uh, is it, you know, autonomous vehicles, one might think that this is a great idea, but in, in fact, it's high risk. What if there's an accident? What if there's something that happens? Uh, is the city going to get blamed for it? So a, a city, first and foremost, uh, who's willing to take the risk, um, it, 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 it needs to happen. Uh, so cities that are uh, here welcoming new technologies, uh, allowing for the testing of, of uh, camera technologies, uh, uh, Wi-Fi systems, things like that, I think that are very important. Um, uh, and, and of course, cities that actually use some of the technologies. And in, in our city, I can tell you that we are trying to implement a software system that is going to be available on an iPhone where you can, and I think it's called My San Jose, where it's going to be allowed, uh, people are going to be allowed to download the app and then report things like street lights, potholes, uh, illegal dumping, graffiti, and many other day-to-day -day things that, that people have to report or spend time. All they have to do now is take a picture and upload it to our, uh, to our staff. The emails will automatically go to our staff and then they will get, the, then the people who report it will actually get feedback on when that problem is fixed. So those are the, some of the things that I can tell you about that why we consider ourselves are a smart city. So for me, when I look at smart city, it's about how we can incorporate a lot of the technologies that are changing our communities and utilize them to better the quality of life. And so everything from how we work with our businesses and allowing that to have expedited processes and good partnerships. We have a very strong economic development department, and so be able to build those types of relationship and connect people. Right now, as a city, we're going through some discussion about uh, potential redistricting for elections, and be able to go out to the community and ask the citizens, besides coming to our meetings, also to have an open city hall where we have some good dialogues and discussions. And then also on the education side, which I touched upon, uh, for me, looking at the ability and opportunities to build those types of um, resources for the next generation, we're looking at a FUSE project, which is a partnership between the school district and ourselves, and how we apply technology into makerspace and then to plan for some of the resources in education in the future. And um, we also we're trying to work on regional solutions, and those include partnerships with my fellow mayors throughout the county as well as in the region to ensure that we have some of these good dialogues and discussions. I know that from um, recent meetings, we also had some great um, connectivity with Mayor Marchand and 
Livermore because we share some of the companies such as uh, LAM Research and also some of the workforce development initiatives. So trying to look at how we incorporate all those technologies and innovations into building that quality of life and the future development of our economics uh, and uh, the service that we provide our community is what I'm looking for. Okay, before you start, Stephen, I'm going to pull you guys back a little bit. The, the question is not what are you doing to be a smart city, the question is what is a smart city to you guys can answer it if you've elaborated, but, but first I really want to know what does it mean to you when you hear the term smart city? Well, I believe smart city, in my own interpretation, will be the city utilize the new technology to help residents, to help the community to, to, to have a better uh, living environment uh, to improve their quality of life. I think that will be smarter uh, from, from what we have done before by using the technology and helping to uh, engage people, engage community, uh, deliver good services to our residents. I'll echo what the previous colleagues have said. It's about using technology to make people's lives better and easier. And to me, that means things like uh, being able to pay all of your city bills on your phone from your couch at 11 o'clock at night if that's what you want to do. Uh, and it means being able to register your child for school without having to stand in a long line. And it means being able to have our traffic lights synchronized and not even synchronized but talking to each other so that we understand how many cars are waiting in the queue and how to uh, pass traffic more efficiently through our cities. Um, anything technology can do, anything technology can do to make our lives easier to me is something that falls under smarter cities. Thank you. Again, similar to what uh, the other folks have said, but it's, it's access to massive amounts of interconnected data uh, that can then be leveraged to provide benefit uh, to the lives of the residents. Now, one of the problems that you run into is there's just so much data out there. I mean, how many folks uh, occasionally just get overwhelmed by the amount of email? I know that uh, uh, we mayors here uh, can get anywhere to four or 500 emails a day. Uh, so there is so much in data out there. How do you ensure that the, the, the residents are getting the access to the data that they need uh, without being overwhelmed by a bunch of superfluous superfluous information that they don't. Uh, so that's that's one of the tricks. Yeah, yeah. So I would simply, um, just one small thing to add to all of the great comments of, of my fellow panelists here is that in addition to applying technology to uh, better our residents' lives, um, I would also add that uh, it also is toward solving not only current problems but anticipating uh, future problems, so sort of forward thinking in the application of the, those technologies to issues that, that we anticipate coming down the line, whether it's anywhere from uh, uh, sustainability, climate change, sea level rise, um, IoT, big data applications. Uh, one of the one small example I can add uh, that we're trying to work on is just making it easier for residents to file uh, permits uh, and get permits online rather than having to go in so into the uh, city offices. So that's certainly things that we can do to make our uh, residents' lives easier. So great comments, and I would say ditto and stop. <laughs> but uh, uh, one of the things I could say is you're looking for that disruptive technology that definitely makes life easier. But keeping in mind that we are leaving the planet a better place for our children, especially keeping in mind the environment. So if we can use technology to improve that, which is very important to us, and it seems to be ne being neglected at, at the federal level, but we, uh, especially in Cupertino, move to paperless permitting. So if you have a project in mind, you would do paperless permitting process, and we make it easy for you. And now we've also gone one step ahead doing 3D modeling. So if you want to see how your expanded house is going to look like, we make that available to you. So you can do it from your home. You can actually see how that works. And the other thing we have is transparency in government. We have 
OpenGov for our budgeting processes. So you know exactly where your dollar that you pay in your taxes goes and how the city uses that. So it is a combination of technology that helps our daily lives and how we improve our lives for the future generations. Thank you, Krista. Yeah, thank you. I completely agree with the comments about uh, quality of life, about making lives easier for our residents and also making it easier to do businesses in the city. Um, I think an important part of that is integrating the technologies together um, so that they become a seamless experience. Uh, there are a lot of great ideas coming out now, um, but it's how, the challenge is how do we bring them all together and make that so that they flow together. Um, and I think uh, some of the best technology, you don't even realize it's there. Um, so for example, um, we're starting to look at more smart city technology for traffic. When you're driving around, you may not be aware of it, but it will actually help you get you faster to your destination. So traffic, I think, is a big area. Energy efficiency is a huge area. There's so much opportunity um, to address climate change through making more effective use of our resources. And then finally, as others mentioned, uh, better participation in government, making it more transparent, making it easier for everyone to understand uh, the decisions that are being made. Thank you. So, um, it's tough when you have so many people who literally think a lot alike on ideas. So I'll give you something that's a little bit more broad now. Um, you know, when you're looking at what's smart, different people have different opinions, as I said. I mean, I drove over here in an electric car. Is that smart? My electric car is a lot dumber than some other cars, but it has to have a battery in it. I have solar on my house. That's not really that smart, but it would be something people would think about in smart cities. So what I'd like to know at this time, you guys have sort of touched on it, which is why I re reschedule a little bit, but my, my real question, the next question is, what is your city doing to be a smart city? We're going to shift right again. So, here. so some of the things that our city is doing, we talked, some of the other mayors talked about connectivity and traffic. So we're taking $10 million and we're trying to make a smart, safe corridor. When we talk about the quality of life, it's not just traffic, um, because of the headaches and stress from that, but it's also the safety aspect. So we've tried to looking at it on a holistic perspective of um, changing all of our street lights to make it brighter and then so people are, have better visibility and especially on some of the high traffic corridor on Fremont Boulevard for us. Um, we're also talking about improving the signalizations so that way we have some of the awareness and we're hoping as the technology evolves to be able to incorporate how those tie into whether it's um, awareness of pedestrians, awareness of the autonomous vehicles. Um, so all those types of things. Um, the other thing is from the city side, when it talks about the environmental aspect, when we're looking at projects and developments, we're consciously looking for developments that incorporate those technologies, whether it's um, how we've addressed some of the issues with um, drought, with energy efficiency, having a good policies that surround that and support um, solar implementation or other um, processes that help us to be more energy efficient as a city. So it's the overall development of policies, working with the citizens, working with our corporations to build those types of resources. Yeah, thank you. Well, uh, certainly City of Alhambra have uh, implemented uh, Gateway uh, Alhambra, which is uh, uh, kind of software that you know cell phone that uh, for people to report potholes and, and services they need, uh, so the staff can uh, they can take pictures, staff can respond to it, and also we have the uh, I think pause polling, which is uh, for emergency responders and and letting people know uh, what happened. In fact, I just got one a uh, little bit earlier today, uh, having a big issue, and then we also utilize the uh, internet, the email and text service to let people know uh, the major uh, events happening in, in the city. That aside, utilize the utility. I think one point uh, for us, I, I believe smart city also, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're talking about the uh, sustainability and, and for, uh, for, for, to me, it's more of a city planning, uh, especially residential developments and uh, city developments, property development. So, where we are balancing how we can anticipate the uh, population growth, how to put the uh, uh, higher higher density areas, 
versus protecting the uh, residential areas. And that is smart to protect both sides, uh, anticipating the uh, publishing growth as well as protecting the uh, integrity of, of the small town community base. So those are the things, not necessarily all in so-called high-tech portion of it, but also into the thinking of how the community will go forward as a community. Thank you, David. I already mentioned the Go Dublin app that uh, helps uh, riders from the BART station uh, take a, an Uber ride or a Lyft ride. Uh, we also do things like uh, connecting the city hall to the community uh, apps that allow people to report uh, things throughout the city. Uh, and we've uh, also are looking into things like uh, carpool share uh, apps with uh, Scoop. Uh, if you've not heard of Scoop, that's a great carpool share uh, app. And uh, uh, we're, we're looking at doing all the things that were mentioned before. One of the, the big things is the, the smart lights. So getting lights to talk to each other and getting lights to be able to see uh, the cars coming, where they're coming from, and to efficiently move cars throughout our city is a big one that we're exploring and we'll be investing a lot of money into smart lights in the near future. So interesting, everybody has smart lights. And when I was on the city council for Burkina, we upgraded our lights as well. And so since you have the oldest light, maybe you could illuminate us a little bit more on that. Yeah. It's the oldest light. Well, it's the oldest uh, uh, incandescent okay. light bulb. It's 116 years old. It's been burning in our uh, uh, fire station uh, since uh, 1901. But, uh, and, and that's that's not smart technology, but it was it was made so well uh, that the Shelby Light Bulb Company actually went out of business because people didn't come back to buy another light bulb. So uh, uh, we're doing a lot of uh, similar sort of things. We have a, a smartphone app, a uh, Livermore app, that uh, people can download for free, and it allows them to be the eyes and ears of our community. So if they see graffiti, if they see potholes, if they see uh, cracked sidewalks, they can take a photograph of it. They can. Uh, take a picture, they can uh, just text us the information. Uh, it's automatically got the, uh, the location tagged so we can go back and find it and, and solve the problem. It gets people involved, gives people more ownership of their community. It helps them be involved uh, and stay active and, and, uh, and, and feel that ownership. Uh, we also have uh, uh, to encourage more uh, uh, connection with City Hall and greater participation. Uh, we have online paperless agendas. Uh, as we all know, we can have agenda packets uh, that exceed a thousand pages uh, every couple of weeks. Uh, so to have those uh, downloaded, downloaded to your iPad makes life a lot simpler, saves trees, better for the environment, and people can sit at home, they don't have to go to the library, but instead they can read the packet uh, from their home uh, and then uh, be better prepared to provide input to the City Council so that we make the best decisions. Uh, we also have uh, smart lights and also we can do real-time adjustments to our street lights or to our stoplights uh, to move traffic uh, through the community. Uh, we also, uh, to, to um, uh, assist the police officers, we have uh, automated license plate readers so we can uh, be out in the community uh, anticipating crime and preventing crime, uh, in many cases even before it happens. Uh, and uh, uh, so those are a couple of the uh, uh, the applications that we're using to make our community smarter. Uh, another thing, as I mentioned early on, uh, we have uh, the Lawrence Livermore and CND National Laboratories. Uh, Alex Latin mentioned today about the importance of cybersecurity. Uh, a lot of the cybersecurity work that is being done uh, across the country is really being done in, in Livermore uh, with Sandia and, and Lawrence. Uh, so, in fact, they identified that there was an OEM uh, virus uh, in a power cable. That they identified. So these are the folks that stay awake all night so that you don't have to, uh, to ensure that, uh, uh, that we, we do have these secure systems. Uh, they actually have a virtual city of about 60,000 people that they can inject a virus or malware, and when it reaches a critical number of infections, it will launch. Then they can work with the school district. We have high school students that can they take these viruses apart, find out what triggers them, what makes them work, and better yet, how to create uh, a vaccine to, uh, uh, to prevent further damage. So real innovative thoughts, real uh, innovation uh, within uh, these technical environments. They're doing a lot to support uh, these, uh, these smart cities. 
So in addition to many of the, the great projects that have been mentioned, some of the things that we're also exploring um, include we are uh, not only embracing but encouraging uh, EV chargers as part of the parking development, not just having a minimum number of EV chargers for current uh, electric cars, but also in effect requiring pre-wiring of additional parking spots so that they can accommodate future electric cars as those, uh, as those grow in usage. Um, water recycling technology has improved to the point now that we have, as part of our general plan, we're uh, requiring some of our larger developments to have on-site water recycling for non-potable irrigation purposes. And, and that's actually come down to the point where that's cost effective and, and efficient. Um, we've also participated in a San Mateo County-led effort to uh, synchronize and, and have our lights, um, uh, street lights, uh, coordinated in a way that if there's a problem on Highway 101, which I'm sure we've all experienced, uh, there is uh, there's a way to be able to redistribute traffic uh, onto other streets like El Camino uh, and to synchronize the lights to be able to minimize that, that impact and divert traffic uh, from a uh, safety standpoint. Uh, and, then, uh, and then the one thing I thought I would add is a question that I wanted to pose, which was the area that we haven't been able to really utilize technology is in the area of engagement and really getting, you know, people are busier now. They're having a harder time just with their lives. They're having a harder time to try and pay attention to what the city is doing or, or you know, projects that might impact their neighborhood. And we use Nextdoor and we use all of the social media, but, but I don't feel like we've quite cracked that. So I thought I'd throw that out as, as if any other, if any of the companies out here have great ideas and engaging um, our uh, residents and Certainly, my colleagues here were very open to to trying new ideas. So, thanks. Thank you, Sue. Um, most of the comments again uh, have already been shared. The one thing we do do is a citywide alert in case of emergency, and that comes right to your phone, which is really really good. And also pulse point, as was mentioned earlier, and these are very useful in cases of emergency. Um, we also have great relationship internationally. So we have four sister cities, um, Copertino in Italy, Shinju in Taiwan, uh, Toyokawa in Japan, and Bhubaneswar in India. And Bhubaneswar is a smart city in India, so we have a collaboration with another smart city. And then we also have about definitely more than 20 friendship cities. And those friendship cities talk to us about their technology, like mobile bikes, which is very similar to what uh, somebody else mentioned about the last mile, first mile problem. So we engage with other countries, and I mentioned earlier because of the population that we have, we have a big immigrant population. They bring us ideas from their friends and relatives back in their country of origin. So it makes it easier, the process, to understand what the technology is and make uh, the transition easier for the country, from the country of origin to import it into <coughs> Cupertino. And we're looking at new technologies every day. And like Peter said, I welcome you to tell us how we can outreach to our residents in an easier manner rather than next door. Um, we have a very interactive website, but then that requires the residents to come to it. So it would be very nice to have a way to reach our residents. Thank you, Sweden. Lisa? So we are also looking at um, tr intelligent traffic lights, intelligent traffic systems. We're rolling out the system right now. We're very excited about it. Um, provide, connects uh, traffic lights, and not only the lights, but uh, cameras at intersections throughout the cities back to city travel time already. When we were prototype or trialing uh, this at one intersection near a Google office building, Google actually noticed that the traffic was better and they measured an improvement. We didn't tell them we were doing this. They came to us and said, hey, why is the traffic suddenly better here? And we said, okay, well, actually, we're doing this, this trial program. And they said, that is wonderful. Here's $250,000 to go do that at more intersections in this area. Um, so I thought that was, that was an exciting success that we didn't even tell them what was going on and they noticed a difference. We are also working with a local startup who is trialing a delivery robot um, primarily for restaurants um, and we have 
quite a few smartphone apps, um, especially for our utilities. Um, if you have a question of how to recycle something, you can just ask the app. Um, when is uh, street sweeping day so I can get my car off the road? Um, go to the library. And actually, I think the challenge in the future will be integrating all those apps. There are almost becoming too many smartphone apps, and you have to sign it into them separately. Uh, so to figure out how to bring those together into one user experience, I think that's an opportunity we have going forward. Thanks. So I don't know where to begin. Uh, the city center is pretty big. We have 21 projects that are being tested right now in the city of San Jose. Um, you name it, from earthquake detection to better street lights to, uh, you, you know, device check out of the library for kids who don't, can't afford an iPad or something. So we have, we have many, many different projects. We, uh, we, we are working um, on, on environmental issues like we've just created, we're starting to create our own community choice energy program that we just uh, approved this uh, last month. Uh, we our, our building and planning department is, is doing on, is, is moving to online permitting and online uh, automated plan checking in the future. Uh, so th there's a quite a bit of things that we're doing uh, to help our own uh, uh, constituents, and we're also doing a lot to help our, our businesses. We we have the U.S. Patent Trade Office, which is actually in this building. Uh, we have something called a free trade zone where people can actually. A businesses can actually bring in products without being taxed on them so they can manufacture them here and then get taxed on the final product instead. Um, our airport are, uh, has non-stop direct flights to Beijing and Shanghai, if any, any, any of you are interested, uh, as long and we touch many other uh, places in the world, uh, the France, Britain, um, uh, Japan, Mexico, we have daily flights out of that and, is, and we're expanding those services to our, uh, 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 to our businesses, and we also help big businesses locate here too. Uh, we try to help them find places to lease. Uh, Samsung just moved here. Uh, so there's a lot of things that we do both for our constituents and businesses, and like I said, we have 21 pilot projects going on here, and I did mention uh, from Facebook to uh, Facebook internet to uh, earthquake detection, and. Uh, and we welcome even more. So we, we want to be your test bed for, uh, for your ideas. Thank you. Um, so Peter actually stole one of my later questions. I'm going I'm to comment on it. How do you engage the public? Um, I sort of have some low tech opinion on that. So first, I want to say for everybody in the audience, freedom cost. If you want freedom, you need to be diligent and pay attention. If you don't like your elected officials, get to know them so you can vote for people who do a good job um, and not vote for people if you don't like the job they're doing. Um, that said, no matter how much technology we have, it's been my experience that a large portion of the population won't use it. So I think a good answer is you can have staff and elected officials actually go out and meet people, knock on doors, pick a random door. I used to have a habit of projects going on, I'd knock on random doors because the people that show up at city council don't always represent what all the neighbors think. Um, I was out with staff one time and there was a piece of land that was right in the middle of where a big project was going to park and they said, boy, it's too bad that's really in the way. And I said, did anybody ever ask the owners? And so I grabbed two staff members and walked over and knocked on the door and introduced ourselves, asked how everything was going, would they be treated well by the project going on next door to them? They said, yeah, great city, let it here. And we left the card and said, if you ever decide you want to sell your property, give the city a call. And when they did, a couple years later, one of them walked in and said, I was told to do this and the city was able to obtain the property. So never underestimate the value of old-fashioned knocking on the door and actually talking to somebody because some people won't use the technology. Having said that, you guys are so nice, and I'm, I'm sure in all your local council, you all get along great. Nobody ever has any, any uh, arguments or anything. I'm going to give you a chance now. So this question is going to be, tell us why your city, the one thing that really separates your city, makes it smarter than all the other people out here. And we're going to start with our esteemed colleague from Southern California. Well, I think uh, my colleagues uh, probably will agree with, with me is you have uh, cordial and community in mind. First, no self interest. My city council will be the first start to be able to do that. Uh, 
most of the city uh, except like San Jose and uh, maybe uh, uh, Fremont and those are dedicated most of the smaller town cities who are city council and uh, city manager setups so if uh, if we treat city council as board of directors and city manager as the CEO running the city if when you have a board that's have an invite and do not have a clear direction and then every two years possibly have changing in direction, your staff is not going to be able to move them forward. So uh, I, again, you know, uh, engaging the community, community, uh, the voters need to vote the people that have the community in mind and uh, have a uh, reasonable, open-minded council that would probably help to move uh, the agenda quicker, better. Uh, City of Alhambra, uh, was very fortunate. Uh, we have tournaments, three terms each, and and for the last thirty some years, um, all almost all the seats that we have have a three term uh, set up. I'm on my eleventh year, so next year I'm turning off. But you know, because of the consistency, because of the understanding, because you know, uh, it's, it's a little bit different from the setup uh, political system in in. in Elsewhere, in, especially in China, that we are not appointed, we are elected. So every four years, we have facing a challenge. So um, you know, we, we need to have the first four years probably if learn, and then the second four years, you probably try to implement something, and then third terms, hopefully, you can see the results. I'm I'm seeing my hard work invest in the community with my colleagues that uh, realized right now. So I'm very pleased with that. I, I think. For us, it's like uh, in order to get the city move forward, whether it's a smart city or just you know for the community, you have to have a good city council. Thank you. Before you start, I have two disclaimers, and I'm going to fire them off. So obviously, I'm sure that your city is smarter than the rest because of your mayor and your city council. So we're just going to take that one for granted and off the table. And uh, and and spaceships don't count either. So. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, that's a good one. Uh, before I answer, though, I want to point out, we all said that we're looking at smarter lights and uh, synchronization and uh, better ways to move vehicles. There's a, a session coming up exactly on that, intelligent transportation systems. I think you should all stick around for the 325 presentation because it's going to be, uh, looks like it's going to be pretty wonderful. Um, but I'll say that we're the smartest city, and I won't say the mayor or the city council, but I'm going to say, uh, or uh, we can say staff, uh, right? I think you said we could say staff, but I'm going to say it's our community. Um, our residents uh, are some of the, and I know because they know that because they moved up north from many of the cities that are next to me. We have half of Fremont and Cupertino and San Jose that moved up to uh, to uh, Dublin. We have great residents with uh, wonderful ideas and uh, a welcoming community that will not take no for an answer. Technology will burst. Uh, from our seams, and that's just the great thing about being in the Silicon Valley and about being in all of our communities, I think. But I think, you know, we em embrace that technology and we have the community that, that pushes us hard on it. So I want to also thank my colleagues. I've gotten a lot of great ideas from what you're already doing. Um, it's pretty amazing to, to hear. So we've got a long way to go, as much as I think we're the best at, at it. Mark, I'm going to say that we got a long way to go. Thank you. Well, Livermore has more PhDs per capita than any other city in the country. So we got a lot of smart people in Livermore. Uh, also, what makes us smarter is that we work together at a, as a region. Uh, the Tri-Valley cities, when we, we go back to DC every year and we, we work as a region, uh, and we, we get a lot of traction that way. Uh, we have uh, uh, the Tri-Valley cities invested in an organization called iGate. Uh, and I prefer to refer to this as an innovation collider, where you get a lot of smart people with a lot of innovative technologies coming together in a small space uh, and bouncing ideas off of each other. This was a concept that was uh, brought up in the uh, about 2008, 2009, at the bottom of the recession. The idea is to leverage the assets that we have in the community, Lawrence Livermore and Sandia National Laboratories, take new technologies and ideas coming out of the, the laboratories, taking those great new ideas, turning them into great businesses, attracting uh, the, uh, uh, the investment 
and then creating jobs. So this was, this was from the Tri-Valley cities working together. Uh, we also have an innovation Tri-Valley where everyone has come together. We have the city governments that come together, the school districts, and industry to make sure that we are aligning the needs of industry's workforce for tomorrow and that the school districts are creating those skill sets so that those two can align. Uh, also, as, as further proof, uh, when the two biggest disasters in, in recent memory happened, uh, the meltdown in Fukushima uh, at the reactor and also the Deepwater Horizons disaster, uh, the world came to Livermore to seek solutions. They came to our laboratories to find out how to solve these problems that were really occurring at the, at the edge of our understanding of, uh, of physics uh, and the, the scientific world. So that's why Livermore is, uh, is a tremendous, not only city, but a region. Of, of the Tri-Valley, because we all work together, we understand how important it is to draw and leverage all the assets for the, uh, from the region. Well, usually PhDs, I thought were too smart to run for public office. Oh, yeah. I thought PhDs were too smart to run for public office, but I guess you, gotta, you can get a few people to run it. You know, I, I had to. <laughs> okay, uh, Peter. Uh, so, I, I certainly think we, we've been in Menlo Park um, at the forefront of sustainability um, and adopting technologies that improve sustainability. Um, I don't think we've been quite as on the forefront or, or cutting edge in terms of adopting other technologies and so we've embarked on a, a, a technology master plan to really look at how uh, we can improve the operations and, and our transparency to our residents and also uh, as I mentioned make the interface between the city government and our residents easier to use and, and more, more efficient. Um, uh, but having said that, you know, we, one of the, the great strengths that we have in our city is certainly um, all of the residents that are involved in, in technology, whether uh, they're making the investments in their venture capital firms, uh, making bets on, on new tech companies, um, and so in many ways, what we're trying to do is to encourage, uh, I think, as you mentioned, some incubator space so that we can um, basically catch some of that great energy and, and innovation, um, not necessarily guide it, but, but have it in our town so that potentially uh, we can help uh, uh, encourage growth within our city. So um, I'll leave it at that. So, sure. it's good. Um, uh, Cupertino has really smart, educated, and engaged residents, that's for sure. They are very, very aware of what's happening in the cities. But what they're also very aware of is what's happening in the neighboring cities. So they always come up with ideas that help the city along with the neighboring cities, which at least touch geographically. So we have a great Safe Routes to School program for our students, and our city residents engage with Sunnyvale, Saratoga, San Jose, Santa Clara, Los Altos, because these neighboring cities, their children all come to our schools. So whatever they plan, they plan so that all the neighboring cities, the kids can be benefit, they can benefit from our program. The other thing we help, we respect, are our seniors. And we are trying to get a program for mobility for our seniors. You could call it an Uber or Lyft for seniors but something that's less low on technology, but very high on personal contact, so that the seniors do not have to, you know, they, they're really not comfortable with the smartphone. So they can actually call a phone number and get the service, the transportation service for them. So we truly respect our seniors, and I personally am trying to do the most for their mobility and their housing. That's a platform I ran on, I am trying to do my best for them. The other thing that Johnny mentioned is Silicon Valley Clean Energy. Uh, Cupertino was one of the first cities to move the needle forward. We partnered with 11 neighboring cities and unincorporated Santa Clara County to adopt Silicon Valley Clean Energy. And in this month of April this year, we launched it. And we have great participation from our residents. Many of them have chosen not to opt out. So we are bringing clean energy to all our residents. The fourth thing that I want to talk about is traffic. I also serve on the board of ETA. So again, our residents 
helped me talk to all the neighboring cities so that we could come up with regional uh, solutions for our transportation. Cupertino does not have either a light rail or Caltrain. We do not have mass transit. So we've been talking to VTA to get our residents to the places where they need to go by using public transport. So keeping environment in mind, I think we are a very smart city. Thank you. Good stuff. I definitely have to agree that we have very, very smart residents in this area. Um, I was just checking the statistics on patents per million residents in the San Jose, Santa Clara, Sunnyvale, Cupertino area is number one in the country, 50% more than the second highest area in the country. Um, I had one council member from another city tell me, you know, this is these are the kind of cities where 90% of the people think they're smarter than you, and 75% of them actually are. <laughs> so, it can be a challenge to be a council member here, but that's great. I, 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 I love that. Um, I think the diversity of the community is a really important aspect as well. Diversity of the residents. In Sunnyvale, 45% of our residents were born in another country. Um, so we have a huge number of perspectives that people bring to bear in the community. Um, and I think that really fosters innovation and creativity. We also have a very diverse um, business ecosystem in Sunnyvale. We don't have one single large employer. We have many, many technology companies. And some of them are headquartered in Sunnyvale, like Juniper. Um, others, like Apple and Google, have a large number of offices, but their headquarters are elsewhere. We benefit from that diversity in our economic base. And then finally, my hat is really off to our city staff. Um, they are dedicated, they are professional, they are the people behind the technology that make sure that things really get done. Um, and I think we, we just, we can't overlook how important it is to have good people who make sure that things get delivered well, um, that they are responsive to the community. Um, that is absolutely critical. Thank you. I have to say we were named the smartest big city in the United States, so <laughs> let's start with that. Uh, but not because of our city council, mind you, uh, but, uh, but we, we um, well, have that has something to do with it. <laughs> yeah, I have to say, my, my constituents and many of the people that live in San Jose uh, migrate every day to some of your cities. Uh, for, to work at, uh, you know, in, to Apple and Google and some of these other uh, places. And we have, of course, some great companies in our own backyard. In my own backyard, I have the IBM research facility that doesn't ha hire anybody without a PhD. So um, uh, I, 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 I'm not kidding when I say we have some of the smartest people in the world, and I know uh, we all benefit from, from their ideas. One of the things that makes our city itself a very smart city and city council is that we're open to learning. Uh, we're learning. We're open to learning from all of you, uh, and we're willing to experiment. Like I said, we have 21 projects going on right now, and and we're looking for great ideas to make everyone's life easier. And our door is always open. And I think the rest, my whole city council is, despite what we believe on budgets and other things, we are, we are all focused on making the lives of our uh, citizens better, and we're always looking for new and better ways to do that. So I think that's what makes us a smarter city. Uh, and and uh, and the fact that we are open, so open to new ideas, that uh, we're willing to do everything from trying uh, composting, which sometimes doesn't work, and and creating you know big messes. But uh, like I said, we are risk takers, and we are uh, and and uh, and eventually we'll learn from even our mistakes. So, thank you for the question. Thank you. I come at the end of this. Last so but not least. yes, but certainly not least. Um, for our city, I think one of the things that make us smartest is, um, first off, I do think we are willing to explore and innovate new technologies. We have the most startups per capita in the nation. Um, we have some of the most patents filed from the education system. Even CNN has found our students um, as recognition for that. But I, I agree with you um, earlier, Mark, that you commented how important it is to look at the low tech to high tech. So. For ourselves on our council and also with our staff, it's so important for us to be a bridge um, to connecting ideas with the resources, whether it's uh, the residents, the companies, and we have such an amazing diversity of over 105 languages um, and dialects being spoken. We support that in the education systems. Um, we also strongly believe in age-friendly community. Um, we're one of the 
eight cities being recognized by AARP for being um, supportive of age-friendly initiatives, and we just recently had some discussions with focus groups of over um, 300 focus groups that connected some of those different discussions about how do we make sure that we have the technology and safety aspects. Um, and low tech, in terms of going out, we have in our um, community also coffee with the cops. Um, and then for ourselves as council, we feel it's very important to have that outreach. We speak at rotaries, at different meetings, at, at community events, um, because we feel that when we have that knowledge and exchange, it allows our citizens to feel more participatory in the process, that they have more control. And it is important for them to see that transparency and awareness, whether it comes from the aspects of right now that we're going through the period of budgeting, to how we look at how we drive the future of our city council. Having that participation and awareness of their roles, and it doesn't matter if they are 18 and old enough to vote or the younger generation, we also encourage our students to get involved because we do think that there's a lot of ideas that um, can only be demonstrated and explored by that openness and that mindset. We had, for example, on the school district side, even one of the students write the software for um, an app for connecting to the citizens so you can find out what's going on in the schools. And all they wanted for that was a letter of recommendation for college. And so, you know, these types of opportunities really foster, and it's that knowledge and exchange space. We, we look at our libraries and having maker space there and we had some students recently participate in the Maker Fair, and um, I was so impressed. Not just were they using a 3D printer, I had one student who built a 3D printer using parts from his 3D printer. And so, um, you know, just that type of ecosystem um, with our businesses, clean tech, biotech, and semiconductors, we have an innovation district, and bringing those knowledges um, together and having those collisions of those ideas and supporting it, again, with the policies that's what hopefully our council's going to be able to do and make it a smart city. Thank you. Well, um, I had one more question, but we're actually out of time. N notice that no council members can count to one, by the way. So <laughs> ask, ask for the one thing that separates them. But um, you guys all did great. Um, maybe when you guys are no longer sitting, when you would like to have this seat next time, and you can ask a question that I was going to ask that I didn't get to. Thank you all very much. Um, it was a wonderful Thank panel. You. you guys did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we would like to thank you all our dignitary today, for all of you, and we also have a director of Moto Product, uh, Lily. Lily.